What's up guys, I'm Kel, Red Zone Rogue, and welcome to another Force of Will strategy video. Today, I'm going to go back to my roots and do some Wanderer strategy videos. Specifically, I'm going to be doing two. This is uh, part one of two. In honor of the new recent Wanderer GPs, I'm pretty stoked that we're actually finally getting Wanderer GPs. Obviously, this first video is going to be going over Kyrick Rarick, one of the breakout decks of the tournament. And um, I, just, I just love this deck. I think it's fantastic. Uh, this deck in particular topped eight. Uh, the tournament uh, with a couple different finishes rather that means um, multiple Kyrix got in the top eight is what I'm trying to say um, this version of the deck is slightly different it's kind of like my my own little take to it but it's pretty fucking close it's basically um, some of the decks that topped in that recent tournament I don't have a uh, sideboard for this deck in this video but I do have one in the description down below as well as the full deck list so if you want to check out a sideboard um, you can look at that but without further ado Let's talk about this dick. I <laughs> know I said that. A little weird. Anyway, our J ruler is Kirik Rarik. He's a Dragonoid. I was gonna say he's a ruler, but obviously he's a fucking ruler. He has judgment of two fire and one of any Ana energize of a fire. You probably already know what he does, but I'm gonna cover him just in case you're new or in case you forgot. Um, in addition to that, he has at the beginning of the game, you put 10 strength counters on him, and then you can rest him at any time to go up to 10 strength counters. So it's put X strength counters on this card where X is 10 minus the number of strength counters. You you always go up to up to 10. He also has his unsealed ability, Blood of the Dragon God. This is a really, really good ability in all honesty. It says remove two strength counters from this card. Look at the top five cards of your deck. You can put a battle arts from among them into your hand and then put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. Play this ability only during your turn and only once per turn. So this is a great value engine for Kirk. Let's it lets you keep your hand full and it also lets you get some of the key cards in this deck, specifically Play Dead. Uh, we're going to talk about Play Dead a little bit later, but that is a fan fantastic card and basically makes this deck play more like a combo deck than just um, just an, an aggro deck. And then we have the J Ruler side of the card. We don't actually J activate him too often, but he's still pretty good when he does. He's Kirk Rick, the Draconic Warrior. He's a 1200 1000. He's still a Dragonoid. He has Precision. He also says when this card enters the field, put X Strength counters on it. Basically, you go up to 15. And then you can remove five strength counters from him and deal 500 damage to a J Resonator. It's pretty sweet that it can hit uh, J Rulers as well. So this is a good way to, you know, if you're struggling against some sort of J Ruler strategy, maybe IU or something, you can flip him and then just, you know, nug her out. Then he also has his uh, God's Art. This is the Dragon King's Descent. So for one fire, you can remove uh, seven strength counters for him and then look at the top seven cards of your deck. You can put a Dragon Resonator from among them onto the field, put the rest in your graveyard, and then he gets plus 1,000, plus 1,000 until end of turn. And um, we are actually not running any Dragon Resonators main deck, uh, but we do have some on the sideboard. So just keep that in mind. Uh, most of the time we're going to be sticking with this side, getting value from his uh, his uh, Blood of the Dragon God here, and um, yeah, using, using the Strength Counter Generation. But without further ado, let's talk about the stones. So the stone deck is pretty simple. First up, we have Little Red the Pure Stone. This is my favorite stone in Wanderer. Actually, one of my favorite cards in Wanderer, to be honest. Um, it is a true magic stone, which means you can only have one of them on the field at a time. It's kind of like the legend rule for Magic the Gathering. Um, it says, when it enters the field, uh, choose an attribute. Um, you can rest it to produce one will of the chosen attribute, and you can rest it to give a resonator of the chosen attribute, plus 200, plus 200 until end of turn. Most of the time, we're going to be choosing fire, um, but we also, we're playing with some wind, so you can choose wind. But we're gonna we're gonna basically be choosing fire, and then it also has the um, you know you can only have one of these on your field blah blah blah. It's a fantastic card, um, just kind of a no brainer for most wanderer decks in my opinion. Next up we have another true magic stone. This is one of the cards that wasn't run in any of the top decks in the GP, and I'm not entirely sure why because I think this card is fantastic. So it is a true magic stone, Mylist the Ghostly Flame Stone. You can rest it to produce a fire will. You can pay a fire will and rest it for an, this kind of weird ability. It says, this turn, if target J Resonator would deal damage, it deals that much plus 200 instead. And then it has the, you know, if you control two more of these, you have to get rid of one. Um, that, if that clause, that if it would deal damage, it deals that much plus 200 instead, isn't exactly applied to only combat damage. There are other damages that would increase it as well. Um, so just keep that in mind with another card that we run on the deck, but you know it, it does come up And I think this card's fantastic. Just a extra way to get some get some damage in next up We have magic stone of blasting waves This is pretty obvious for a fire and wind deck. I ran a full playset of these I mean, it's just a dual stone with no drawbacks. Why would you not run them? 
Uh, next up, we have a dual stone with drawbacks. I run three of these. You should probably run four, but I don't own, actually own four copies, so I'm going to be running this one in lieu of the fourth copy. It is a, you know, special magic stone. When it enters your field, you get to put two magic counters on it. You can rest it to produce a fire will, and you can rest it and remove a magic counter to produce a wind will. So, yeah, it's like a, a really bad version of Blasting Waves, but it still works. And then this is what I run instead of the fourth copy of that. This is Memoria of Reincarnation. It's also kind of like a bad version of Blasting Waves. It says if your J-Ruler isn't Christia True Beastmaster, and it's not, then it enters Rested unless we pay 500 life, or 300 life. So we can take 300 damage or it enters Rested. We're usually just going to have it come into play unrested. You treat it as a Fire Magic Stone and a Wind Magic Stone, just like Blasting Waves. You can rest it, produce a Fire and Wind. And it says when this card leaves your field for a non-magic, or for a non-field zone, draw a card. So if it ever, if it ever like, dies or gets shuffled in or whatever you get a draw a card that usually doesn't come up but i mean it could so before we get started with the rest of the deck i want to cover play dead because this card is a key linchpin of this deck it is so good and it interacts with a lot of the cards in such an amazing and almost broken way so play dead is a chant battle arts for one fire it has quick cast so it is a battle arts it's one of the two battle arts that are running in the deck so we have eight total in the deck um, you know, this is the, the cards that you can get from uh, Kyrick's ability here. And it says, as an additional cost to play this card, remove X strength counters from your J Ruler. And it says, target resonator with total cost X or less gains when this card is put into a graveyard from the field, put it into the field until end of turn. So basically, it gives one of your dudes the ability to come back when it dies, which is absolutely crazy with the next card, Cthulhu the Living Flame. So this card is also borderline broken, probably one of the best cards in Wanderer, and that's pretty funny, considering that it's from one of the worst sets ever made, Millennia of Ages. Anyway, this is Cthulhu, the Living Flame. He costs two of any and one fire. We don't care about that, because he has an alternate pay cost. He also has Swiftness, 500-500, and his alternate cost is Incarnation of one uh, Fire Resonator. So you may banish one Fire Resonator rather than pay its cost. So if you have a Fire Dude on the field, you can just banish it and then play Cthulhu and then attack for 500. So say you have a situation where you have uh, Play Dead. So you, um, let's say, just, just with these, just with these cards right here. Without any of the other really good cards in the deck. So you have a Cthulhu on the field already. You play Play Dead on them, right? You attack with your Cthulhu. Then you banish your Cthulhu to play another Cthulhu. You attack for 500, and this one already came back into play with this one, and you can attack again. Um, there's a lot of crazy shit you can do with that. Especially considering that some of the other cards have effects when they die. Um, play Dead is absolutely nuts, and uh, Cthulhu helps make it nuts. So one of the best cards you can banish with Cthulhu is Ruck Egg here. If you've been playing Force of Will for any amount of time, you've probably seen Ruck Egg. Well, not any amount of time. If you've, if you've been playing Force of Will um, before the Rhea Cluster, you've probably seen Ruck Egg. Anyway, he's a one fire resonator. He's an egg. Zero, 200. You cannot attack. That seems pretty shitty, right? Well, it says when this card is put into the graveyard from your field, you can search your main deck for a fire resonator, reveal it, and put it in your hand. Then you shuffle your deck. So, um, if you banish your Ruck Egg to uh, Cthulhu, you can go and get another Cthulhu. And then banish your Cthulhu and play him, and then attack again. And if you have Play Dead, then you can get it back into the field. You can do a lot of shenanigans. Like I said, this deck kind of plays like a combo deck every now and then. Well, not every now and then. It, it plays a combo deck quite often. Next up, we have another fantastic resonator with Piggy Hoyle's Great Hero Pig. We're starting the Bacon Train. We have 500, 700. For one fire and one of any, he's a Resonator Beast. When he enters the field, you put two Strength Counters on your J-Ruler. Then you could remove two Strength Counters from your J-Ruler and give any Resonator Swiftness or Flying. So that is really, really sweet. Um, you can give him Swiftness. He's probably one of the only Resonators in the... I think he is one of the only Resonators in the deck that doesn't have Swiftness already. So a lot of times you're going to be either giving Piggy Swiftness, another Pig Swiftness, or any of your dudes Flying. I mean, this is just a fantastic card. And... Not, not much to say. I think everyone already knows how good Piggy is. And like I said before, we're going to keep the bacon train rolling with Hoel Pig. He's a 400, 300 for one fire. He's a Resonator Beast. He's actually pretty good. Um, you can banish him to recover your ruler. So if you ever need any more strength counters from Kirik, you can always banish your pig and rest him and get more strength counters. Also, 400, 300 for one fire. It's not too bad. Um, piggy, or not Piggy, this Piggy is a good addition to the deck. And, um... Yeah, there's almost no reason not to play him right now. Next up, we have Sylvia, Blade of the Supreme King. This card's really, really good. She's a 600-600 six hundred, six hundred 
for one fire and one win. She has Will of Despair. We don't care about that. She has Swiftness. We do care about that. And she also says, whenever this card attacks, target J Resonator cannot block until end of turn. So basically, you're going to want to talk with her first, make it so one of your opponent's dudes can't block, and then crash in with all your other guys and kill them. Well, that, that's the hope. But yeah, Sylvia is fantastic. Um, basically, any deck that can run her probably should run her. And then finally, for the Resonators, we have my favorite play dead target. This is Prissia, Pursuant of Exploding Flame. She's a 700 400 for one fire, one win, and one of any. She's a Resonator Beast. She has a shitload of keywords. She has Swiftness, Precision, and First Strike. And you can also pay a wind and give her flying until end of turn. And when she dies, it deals 500 damage to your opponent. So, yeah, if you play dead her and then uh, banish her using Incarnation with Cthulhu, she'll come back into play and you can attack again. That is so much damage. You can do an insane amount of damage. All right, so check out this scenario, All right? So we have Prissia on the field. We attack with Prissia, deal 700 damage to our opponent. We play Play Dead on Prissia. We banish her to play Cthulhu for free. Prissia deals 500 damage to your opponent's face because she died. Then she comes back into play with Play Dead, and then you can attack with both of these. That is so much damage for, like, such a low cost. Basically, it was the cost of Prissia plus Play Dead if you have nothing else on the field. But if you already have Prissia on the field, it's the cost of Play Dead. Yeah, you can do a lot of sweet shit with this deck. And speaking of crazy damage, we have one of my favorite cards in Wanderer as well, Split Heaven and Earth. This is a two fire cost chant. It says, this card deals 300 damage to each player for each uh, special magic stone they control. Um, we are playing with special magic stones, so this is going to deal damage to us as well. But the idea is that your opponent's life is going to be lower than our life when we play this, and hopefully it kills them and not us. Um, you can deal like 1,500, 1,800 or more damage with this card. You can deal quite a bit. Uh, Split Heaven and Earth is just, just a fantastic card. Next, we have the other battle arts of the deck. This is Heaven Sundering Dragon Palm. This card's actually also pretty crazy. It is a chant for one fire. It has quick cast. The art is just all over the place, but I'm pretty sure Karak is shooting of Dragon Hadouken. Anyway, it says, uh, choose one. If this card was awakened, you may choose up to three instead. You can destroy a target dragon, or this card deals 500 damage to a resonator, or it deals 400 damage to your opponent, and the awakening cost is remove five strength counters. So yeah, um, most of the time you're going to be doing 500 to a resonator and 400 to your opponent's face, but if they happen to be playing like, I don't know, Gwyber, you can blow up their Gwyber, deal 500 to their dude, and then uh, 400 to the face. This is uh, it's really good. Um, I never thought they would print cards that were better than Thunder, but this is... I don't know, this is better than Thunder. And finally, we're going to be going over the cancel cards in the deck. We're only running five of them. Uh, four Fair Spell and one Wall of Wind. So Fair Spell, I mean, you've probably seen it. It's like literally all over the fucking place. It's just a one drop quick cast chant for one wind. And you can cancel target spell with quick cast. In Magic the Gathering, this would be Dispel. Which is funny because in Magic, it's not a very good card. It's, a, it's an okay card. But in Force of Will, it's actually a crazy card because so many cards have quick cast. And then we're also running a Singleton Wall of Wind, which is kind of like a good catch-all. Um, we're only running one because basically your opponent should only fall for this once. It's a chant quick cast for one wind, and it says cancel target spell unless its controller pays one of any. And uh, yeah, those are the the cancels run in the deck. These ones help protect protect our dudes as we smash in, and uh, this one can just kind of get them. Get them. And there you guys go. That was my Kyrick Wanderer strategy vid. I hope you guys liked it. I really like this deck. This is actually one of my go-to Wanderer decks these days, in addition to the next one that's coming up that I've kind of fallen in love with. But Kyrick, I think, is a fantastic deck for new players. It's not too expensive to build, um, especially if you don't pimp it out like I have. And, um... You know, it's also a deck that can be kind of complicated when you're pitching stuff with Ruck Egg, or pitching stuff with Cthulhu when you're sacrificing your Ruck Egg. Like, which Resonator do you go find? Do you find a Prissia? Do you find another Ruck Egg? Um, you know, it's it makes you think a little bit, at least. More than the average aggro deck where you just, like, you know, smash. So if you guys like the video, then maybe leave a like, comment, and or subscribe. Every little bit helps, and I appreciate it oh so much. I do want to note that I also have set up a Patreon. I haven't done an official like launch of it yet, but it's there if you want to help support the channel, help me buy better equipment to make my videos better. If you don't want to, no problem at all. I don't care. Um, I'll talk about it later in the future, but in any case, thank you guys very much for watching, and uh, I hope to see you all next time. Have a good one all, and I will see you later.